course, I'm the historic building curator for uh, St. Mary's City, historic St. Mary's City. And this is the timber frame wall section for house and home, which is going up for an exhibit here at the National Building Museum. This is, uh, represents a late 17th century, early 18th century structure, typical for the east coast of America. When the colonists arrived here in, 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 on the east coast of America, they were confronted by virgin forests. You know, they were absolutely overwhelmed by this marvelous natural resource. England had, uh, you know, they had squandered all their forests fighting off the Spanish Armada. It went into shipbuilding. And consequently, there was very little uh, natural timber growing in England at the time. And that's why timber framing really rose to a high art. They used as few pieces as possible, though they were large, but they were intricately fitted together so that they could maximize the amount of construction material they get out of a single tree. When they came to America, and they were confronted by these huge forests, they quickly realized that they didn't have to spend as much time cutting these intricate joints. They could simplify their joinery. And in this case, this is called the Virginia Framed House because what has happened here is the rafters have been all split, or in this case, pit sawn out of a single piece. Um, it's less labor intensive to do that as far as cutting all these intricate notches. This is resting on a false plate, which is an American innovation. So you have your main post, which is supporting a top plate. This tie beam is coming across. And in typical English construction, here you have um, a principal rafter going up which would sit directly over the post. Here in America, they developed this tilted false plate, which is a, is a way of spanning a large joint and cutting down on the, the amount of uh, uh, joinery you have to do with all your individual pieces. If you only have a limited supply of material, it's very costly to make a mistake. Um, first of all, you've got to cut down a tree, you've got to get it on site, hew it into position uh, and then cut your notch. And if you cut it wrong, then you have to start that whole process again. Now, if that's the only tree that's available to you and you make the mistake, you're in really big trouble. You might have heard the term measure twice, cut once. That's an old term, you know, because it's, you can't afford to make that mistake because if you do, you've got to repeat that whole process. And in England, they didn't have that much material to work with. However, here in, the, here in America, if you made a mistake, it wasn't the end of the world. Even though it was the new world, it wasn't the end of the world in so much that you could go out and you had, you had the resources right there to, to work with.